I think, I think we're live. I think I've done it. Almost all by myself with a tiny bit of help from Al this morning, earlier on. Uh, I think I've navigated it. I'm hoping I've navigated it anyway. Good morning, everyone. Yes, we're a little tiny, we're a minute early, that's all. So um, I'm on my own this morning. We have no uh, Carolyn. She's um, busy with the baby. And... Uh, Al isn't on yet by the looks of things, so I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to carry on as if I know that we're live <laughs> and as if I know that you can, you can, you're seeing me and uh, seeing all of this going on. So, so, um, first of all, I'd like to say good morning to Grey Eagle, who is always standing to my right side. And, um, if only I had someone to tell me I was live. If anybody's out there looking to ask questions, I'm going to put my glasses on here and have a little peer at this screen because I've no idea. Uh, yeah, we are. We're live. We're, it's, yeah, we are. All right. So, um, so uh, good morning to Grey Eagle, who's to my right side. Yes, I know you're all thinking, why just didn't I ask Grey Eagle? And I'm thinking that myself. Why didn't I just say to Grey Eagle, am I live? <laughs> it's like, anyway. Um, this morning we're going to be, uh, as always, uh, uh, answering your questions. But before we do that and before Al comes on, what I would like to do is actually just to um, make sure to remind you all, once again, we do have a competition. The entries have to be in by, I think it's next week. So it's the 15th of March today. So you've got a whole week i think on the 22nd of march and it's about the three chairs talking about the three chairs and all i want you to do for this competition is to write just a little essay you don't have to be a writer you don't have to know grammar i can work through it as long as it's nice and clear you need to uh, email your responses so first of all the first chair that you go into happens to be the sad chair and you'll tell a story that's going to be a sad story and i'm going as i read it i want to feel from you how sad it was for you this story then i'd like you to sit yourself in the happy chair and i'd like you to tell the same story exactly the same story that you told in the sad chair but i'd like if you can and this is this is the whole idea of this exercise is to look just to look at the situation that you that you've had that personal experiences that you personally have had and to try to look at your situation and your experiences in different ways so basically it sort of gets you out of the box and it gets you thinking and exploring different emotions and different ways of dealing with things than you perhaps have already been able to do so in the happy chair you tell me the same exact story and um that story at least has to make me smile. I need to read from you in that story just, you know, just how you can, in fact, always, because we always can, even in the most dire of circumstances, when we look back and we think about things, we can always see some humor, even if it's wry humor, even if it's a you know, little bit of humor that we're not too sure about. Uh, but uh, so sit in the, in the happy chair and tell me that same story, but see if you can find you know, something that is humorous in there or something that at least makes you smile. And then I want you to sit in the third chair, which is the inspirational chair. And the inspirational chair is all about, you know, telling exactly the same story once again, but searching for, looking for, you know, before you write your story, look, take a look at that story and see what has inspired you about that story. And it might be that, you know, you inspired yourself because you had no idea how much strength you had. You had no idea how much, you know, capability that you had to deal with these things, you know, in the ways that, you, that you've been able to. And so, you know, sit in that inspirational chair. It might be that other people connected to you in that circumstance inspired you, inspired you to be perhaps gentler inspired you to be stronger inspired you to be more humble whatever it was that they inspired you to be and i want you to tell that story and see if you can inspire me a little bit uh, by your courage and by the actions that you have taken since that story unfolded for you so 
So the, the first chair is the sad chair, the second chair is the happy chair, and the third chair is the inspirational chair. And it's a fantastic exercise. And even if you don't want to enter the competition, it's a great exercise. You should try and do it in as many different circumstances as you can, because as I say, it teaches us to look wider and to look a little bit further and to look out there to see, you know, how we can learn and how we can grow and how we can discover, you know, much more about ourselves and much more about, you know, how we're thinking and feeling than we perhaps, you know, did know or did or, 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 or you know, more than we were aware of. The competition ends on the 22nd of March. I am not reading any of the stories. We've had a lot of stories in. I'm not reading any of them until they're all in, until the end, because it, it you know, would be unfair of me, I think, to sort of start reading them now because I might get something set in my head that I really like. And, you know, then I don't want to compare one story with another. I want to just read the stories as they come in. So I'm not going to read any of your stories until such time as they are in but i do encourage you to try if you can no more than we're saying 500 words but it will go to 600 if you like if we, we'll stretch it to 600 but really no more than that because you know as, as as much as i do like to read i don't want to be spending hours and hours and days and weeks trying to read this stuff plus i have to you know the shorter the better in a way because i have to uh you know sort of gain from you uh the emotions and the uh, and where you're coming from within the story and sometimes if we write too much if we talk too much we miss the point so try you know to sort of keep it to that 600 words if you if you can um so i will entries close on the 22nd i will be reading the stories after that and um you have to subscribe 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 to to join that means for any of any of the stuff that we're planning on doing in the future you need to subscribe 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 because you know because otherwise we're not going to take any notice of you so it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe and all you have to do i think it's if you look at the screen on your right bottom uh, the, the screen you'll see a little button that says subscribe and all you have to do is click it and we don't do anything with it don't think that you know we're we're out there using your subscriptions for any reason or another because we're not we just it just means that as we grow uh, and as this program grows uh, more and more people are able to see and to hear and to join in with us which is what we want because you know the whole point of mediumship the whole point of my work i shouldn't talk about anybody else but the whole point of my work has been to be you know to spread the word to let people know uh the excitement of the fact of a life after death to to try to you know help those in the spirit world who have no voice and to be their voice and this was what i was asked to do oh all of those long long years ago i'm getting so i'm getting so old now uh it's hard for me to say how many years but more than 30 years ago i was asked if i would do this work and the process of doing this work has been it's been tough it's not been easy but it's been an awful lot of fun and uh, as a friend of mine always says since she's known me she's never cried as much and she's never laughed as much so uh that's the the joy and the pain of being medium is that you laugh a lot and you cry a lot and uh and it pretty much balances out but the joy of being the voice for those in the spirit world those who want to connect with their children those children who are lost who want to connect with their parents there are so many different scenarios that as a medium you know i deal with we all deal with so you know it's very important that we you know that we bear that in mind that the that the job of a medium is not to please all of those of you who come to see me uh, for messages and so on. The job for me primarily, first and foremost, and beyond anything else, is to be the voice, a true voice, uh, to be able to say um, 
what it is the spirit world wants of us uh, to give the messages in the way that they would like to give them not the way i think they should be given you know sometimes it's so easy when you're talking to people in the spirit world it's so easy sometimes to make assumptions that they mean to say one thing when in fact they mean to say something else entirely so you know i have to always be on my guard and not to make assumptions when i'm talking to people in the spirit world it's very very important all right so we're waiting Waiting for Al, but as we're waiting for Al, um, I thought I might give you a, a, another little exercise that you might like to do. Um, last week, I think we talked about making a card. I don't know how many of you did it. I know a lot of you did it because we've had emails from people. And the interesting thing is that I had emails from people who from years and years ago did that exercise and are saying to me, oh, God, you know, we, 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 we still use it and so a couple of people have said oh we're going to do it again because we did it all those many years ago so we're now going to do it again because you know as you get older as you grow you have different goals you have different reasons for doing such a thing but it does work card does work so let us know please if you you know if you have tried that let us know uh how you get on with it or you know if you found it a fun thing to do because it should be a fun thing to do so I've had lots of different questions uh, from people. We're going to go to a question. I've got a list here of questions, uh, and who knows what that means. Oh, yes, L Lauren. Uh, Lauren wanted to know about shamans, and I think she wanted to know, did I, have I ever met? And uh, I didn't write down the name of the particular shaman, Lauren, that you were asking me if I'd met, but um, no, I haven't. The answer is no, I haven't. Uh, Grey Eagle, when he was on this earth, was a shaman. Um, I know I've met um, a couple. I met a friend of Jeff's, actually. Jeff was here last week. I met a friend of Jeff's who is a shaman, and I uh, found him very, very interesting. But it's a, it's a little bit like, you know, people saying I'm a medium and they don't even know what it means to be a medium. But it sounds good, right? I suppose it sounds good on the resume, you know. Um, uh, people say, I'm a doctor, when, you know, they perhaps haven't trained fully as a doctor. Um, you can call yourself anything you like. And lots of people claim to be shamans. And I have met quite a few people who claim to be shamans who really don't actually have a clue what a shaman actually is and what a shaman actually does i would love it one time to invite if there are any native americans out there who would love to come on this show and sit on my sofa with me that would be fun and maybe they could actually describe to us you know what a shaman is what you know what that might mean and so on to them but a shaman is basically a teacher, a teacher of spiritual things. Uh, a shaman is someone who is very, very knowledgeable, very, very knowledgeable in the ways of life, in the ways of, of um, life regarding our soul, life regarding spiritual things, but life in general as well. The shaman in the native villages many years ago was the the wise man or the healer or whatever they would call him he was the one who held the tribes together he was the one who held his people together and uh, and i've got al on the phone hello al hello good morning this is jessica al sister hi jessica can't al get on <laughs> I uh, will be on in just a couple of minutes. Lucas is running a little late this morning. Okay. Good morning, Jessica. We have Good Jessica, morning. who is our sister. Look, we're doing the phone thing again. See that? Because we did that last time. So he sent you. He sent you along, has he? Um, I just have one question, Jessica. Are you looking at me on on the YouTube at the moment? I am. Oh, yes. good. Oh, good. Well, we're live then. Great. Oh no, I don't <laughs> care about that, Jessica. Uh, this is now last time we had a sister of ours. It was uh, it was um, Christina, and uh, now we have Jessica. Now I know Jessica that you uh, drove down with Al right uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday from New York yesterday, to? Yes. To Colorado, they were in the car for 22 hours, everybody. And uh, so uh, I was a bit late getting up this morning, and I think he's really, really tired. Is that right, Jessica? <laughs> yes, that is 
absolutely true. <laughs> uh, well, we're, I'm just chattering away here. And so, you know, and um, I just, I think, answered Lauren's question. Uh, so tell me about Al. T uh, just tell me about you, Jessica. Let's know what it, who you're about. Why are you down in Colorado right now? So I am down in Colorado right now supporting the family. <laughs> they took their third road trip across the country. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I'm, I'm spending the day here with the kids and um, possibly getting a mountain hike in. So Ooh, I'm looking forward to that. The a mountain is hike. beautiful. A mountain hike. Al really ticks me off. He'll always say, oh, I'm just on my way for a hike. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll say, oh, I'm just on my way to the beach, when really I'm not necessarily on my way to the beach. I just... <laughs> I just want to sound like I'm enjoying myself as much as he is. <laughs> uh, so is this your first time in Colorado, Jessica? So no, I spent the holidays out here because they moved just before the holidays. So I spent um, the Christmas oh. holiday out here New Year's Eve. Oh, oh that's right. Right. That, was that your first time? That, uh, that was not, actually. I've been here a few times because I have friends here as well. So. Okay. Isn't it the most amazing place? I love Colorado. Oh, I love it really Colorado. Is. It Where really is. Whereabouts are you in Colorado? We are in the Boulder area. Lovely. I love Boulder. I know Boulder very well. I've been to Boulder a few times. It's just the most. And you know what is really wonderful about Boulder? That the little town there is just lovely. And you any shop or restaurant that you go into everyone is so so nice people are so kind so nice of course they're all smiling and happy because you know why because they live in boulder <laughs> where where better place to live than in boulder uh it's just a beautiful beautiful spot so uh did al give you a task to do or is he just saying call rosemary let her know i'm coming I just, I oh, there you are! I did give her a task uh, <laughs> to uh, ask you some questions. Hi, Al. Uh, so uh, she's going to ask you the first couple until I get set up. Okay, uh, all right. That's okay with you, Rosemary? Sure, whatever. Uh, okay. Let me just uh, uh, finish talking to because I have my own because I've just been chattering away here to everyone. Uh, we are in a little bit. I'm going to give you another exercise like the card exercise. I just promised that we're going to be talking about mantras. What actually is a mantra and how we use a mantra and why would we use a mantra? We're talking, you know, I'm going to try not every week, but I'm going to try every now and again to give you some little uh, exercises just give you a little taste a tiny little taste of what it's going to be like if you subscribe with us on our what are we calling these lessons and things Al what are we doing with those um, anyway whatever they are when you subscribe not to YouTube but when you subscribe with me and you join me on our lessons we're going to be talking about all sorts of things and it's going to be a lot of fun doing that if you're interested in doing those things if you're interested in knowing more, wanting more, email me, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. In the meantime, then, uh, uh, Jessica, do you have a question, darling? <laughs> yes, I do. I have a question from Elizabeth King. Good morning. Like we, we don't use the last name. We're just going to use the first name. That's okay. It's just we, we like to keep have people have their privacy. So, Elizabeth, good morning. Okay, so Elizabeth would like to know, how do you know who your guides are? How do we know who our guides are? Well, those of you who know me well know I don't really like to talk about guides because unlike a lot of mediums who will give guides away willy-nilly, you've got one here and you've got one there. And I mean, I've been to so many spiritualist churches in my time and there are so many mediums who seem to think, you know, oh, I, I, I think it, you know, Again, uh, there are, you know the, there are certain quality and a certain level of mediumship, which perhaps you know if they have nothing else to say or they can't see anything, they'll give you a spirit guide. I know that sounds really, really harsh, but it is the truth. And we've talked about spirit guides before. A spirit guide is a highly evolved spiritual entity, and just to be clear. It's like a, a first-year nurse expecting that the head of the hospital 
the head surgeon of the hospital is going to be walking around with her all day every day trying to teach her her nursing skills it's not going to happen you you, you know just apply just try and apply common sense if you work as i do full time completely you know i don't do anything else then you know the the idea of a spirit guide makes perfect sense because the spirit guide highly evolved highly knowledgeable and a teacher is going to is going to spend the time to teach me because i need because i need it um but most people for your guys and for those who stay you look to your family look to your perhaps your father your grandfather even your great grandfather or your great grandmother they're the ones who steer you and guide you and i want you to try i know it's hard because so many people have been told i've got an arab or i've got a i've got a, a you know an indian i've got a this and that i've got a nun i've got a, it's you know and so often and and it's not it's not accurate it's just not true because as i'm going to say again and i don't want to take anything away from you all because i know some of you do hold on to that none you think is your spirit guide or whatever but if you apply common sense to this just try if you can to apply common sense whenever you're learning whenever you're growing whenever you're discovering something about the spirit world if you apply common sense you won't go far wrong and common sense tells me for a first year student or even a fourth year or a fifth year student you're not going to get the man at the top of the tree who's going to walk around with you all day every day 24 7 helping you in the work that you're doing you're going to have lots of helpers of course you're going to have lots of mentors of course but the spirit guide is way way high high up there so you know so look to your family and don't want to disappoint anyone here and i know some people won't take that they don't like me to say it so they won't take it so that's your choice but again use common sense sorry um jessica Shall we have our next question? Yes, that's actually a good segue to Lisa's question. Who? Lisa has a question. Good morning, Lisa. Um, so the question is, do people in the spirit world keep their same personalities, same taste in music, if they're funny, etc.? Um, they tend to do. Uh, the, the, my experience has been if you've got a, a, a grumpy old man, He's going to be still grumpy he might not be quite as grumpy as he was when he was here <laughs> maybe, maybe he's got things to be happier about but yes i mean uh yes we do keep our personalities i'm not quite sure it's okay it's a uh, as we evolve i'm sure our personalities change but it's like a child you know you've got a personality and you've got likes and dislikes and as the child grows his personality also grows and becomes you know more of one more one way than another for instance my grandson has a very very mischievous personality he likes to he'll say uh, i've tricked you and he's sort of got this glint in his eye and of course in my family my daughter loves to have fun i love to have fun and uh reese likes to have fun and he, he will that personality grow will he become a trickster will he be funny when he's you know and also he's very loving but as he grows will he become more of that or will he become less of that so as we grow and as we evolve life shows us different things and maybe takes us down one road rather than another that grumpy old man might have been a happy little boy but he was grumpy because he had lots of awful you know stuff happen in his life uh so you know when you go to the spirit world you have you know you're shown other things that might actually lighten your personality if you had a heavy personality or you know it might surprise you what have you so personalities do evolve but generally speaking uh when i speak to people um those those i'm giving a message to will often recognize them either by their sense of humor or the way they laugh or the way they you know tell a story or by talking about their likes and dislikes so they do often retain their personality that's an actually um a really good question i'm not sure if i've had that question before but it's a good question all right uh, do we have another question yes patty has a question is that patty patty yes patty with a, <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay that's my english accent 
for uh, pronouncing my T's. Uh, okay, Jessica, what's the question for Patty? After you connect with someone's loved one who has passed, does it become easier for the person to feel the presence of that loved one in the spirit world? Uh, well, it varies with different people, Patty, doesn't it? I mean, some of us are more sensitive. I'm assuming you're not asking me how I make a connection because um, I don't know how. It just happens for me. So I guess I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. But I think some people are much more sensitive and much more aware and some people are so much in grief. And, you know, grief, our emotions can actually act as a, sometimes as a, as a block, as a, you know, as a, um a block to that connection and grief can be an awful thing a terrible thing and when we're in grief or we're deep in grief it's often the case that we won't feel anything because we're going inside ourselves so try remain more open and more out there and more enlightened and and try and do what i have suggested that you do before which is to sit just take 10 minutes of every day to sit in a chair do not ask a question do not say you know can you show me a sign because the 10 minutes in the chair sitting with someone for 10 minutes in the chair you simply say i'm here for you if you want to come around me that's wonderful if you're busy understand i just want to give you this time this 10 minutes of my time and i i just want to know that you I hope you're happy and then you just zip it and you you zip this as well you know because we ask questions in our mind as well so you try if you can to you know to to, to not go there not ask any other questions but you look you listen you sense you feel if you do this enough times if you do this on a regular basis and try and stick if you can to the same time not that it matters too much but if you sort of try and stick to that same time or you or you just send out you know an invitation in in half an hour or at 12 o'clock i'm going to be doing this or that if you can send out an invitation and let your loved ones know that in 10 minutes you're going to be sitting there for them then you know then they know that you know that, that you're going to be around at some point, if you do this on a regular basis, what you're doing is you're making yourself become more open. You're raising your level of consciousness. Simply by doing that, you're raising your level of consciousness. In our classes, when we do our, our classes and our courses, we're going to be talking about how you can raise your level of con consciousness and what exercises you can do to raise your level of consciousness. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, but... If you, as you sit there and as you sit there quietly, you are raising your level of consciousness to a, to a level where you become more sensitive and more aware. Then what you have to do is just simply observe, uh, look, listen. Um, we talk about listening with our eyes. And uh, again, we're going to be talking about how you listen. How do you listen with your eyes? Um, you know, we're going to be talking about how that works as well. But if you can listen with every one of your senses, don't don't get hyped up about it. It's not something you have to do. It's something that you gently do and something that you gently come into. And at some point, if you do this on a regular basis, you will see more, you will be aware more, you will become more and more sensitive so that at some point you will be able to connect with those loved ones in the spirit world that you def desperately, desperately want to hear from. Our next question, do we have a next question? We do. We have a question from James. Good morning, James. This is this is so fun, actually, doing this on the phone. And <laughs> I'm just hoping I've got enough juice. Yeah, I've got juice in my phone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, James. Good morning, James. Let's have James's question, shall we, Jessica? James would like to know what is your advice in regards to winding down after a reading, as it can be overwhelming each and every time. Uh, you're talking about what and I'm assuming that James you're asking, you know, what to, what can a medium do to wind down after uh, after a, a consultation? Rosemary, I think I think um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, he's maybe clarifying. I think he's asking if he goes for a reading. Oh. Uh, yes. Oh. Again, the information can be overwhelming. I think that's what he's asking. But if you can clarify. On the chat, we can, we can, uh, it looks, it looks like it's, I'm going to uh, do, I'm going to do both. Let's, let's do both. Okay, uh, good. I can only tell you from my point of view, right? So as a medium, 
how do I wind down? Um, I could actually be tongue in cheek and say vodka tonic works really well for me. <laughs> it's like, um, I just uh, it because from a medium's point of view, and especially if it's a long consultation or if it's intensive, meaning that uh, people in the spirit world, you know, have sometimes you know if you if you're talking to someone who's taken their own life or someone who's been murdered the, you, those kinds of things with those Im types of emotions can be very exhausting for the medium they can also be very exhausting for the person who's come for the consultation also um it is true that the majority of people who i see will say to me that they feel drained so you know if you if you're referring James to, you know, how, what do you do as a, a, as a person who's had a consultation, they feel, and they feel drained. I always suggest to my clients that, you know, it's very exhausting. They need to just go away somewhere, find, there you are, Al, good morning. Uh, um, find a, you know, find a quiet place, a pad and a pen, and just quietly, very, very, quietly then uh you know sit and reflect and make notes and in the reflecting sitting back and reflecting making notes of what was said even if you've recorded it uh you still if you make notes it's extremely helpful and you know you, you sort of that is a perfect wind down process but it also is reminding you in a much gentler way of what is being said because you don't want to wind down to the point where you you know you want to forget what's being said you you want to remember but absorbing it in a gentle way and sitting and making notes is the best is the best way to go and that's what i always advise my clients after they've spoken with me especially when someone speaks to me speaks with me for the first time they have a consultation with me for the first time that can surely be overwhelming because the information is sort of, you know, it it can be so spectacular and it can be so wow, you know, how did she how did she do that and how did she know that? So that is, you know, and the knowledge of, you know, the the amount that the spirit world can see us and tell us, it can be so overwhelming that you know you might want to sort of. Uh, take a breath uh so sitting down with a pad and a pen is my is my best advice to those of you who are overwhelmed when you speak to a medium and just sit down and make your notes and jot down things and sort of go over it again in your mind but sort of in a in a more gentle way by yourself quietly um and th that would be my way i'll would you say uh because you've had experience of me for the first time <laughs> Were you overwhelmed at all? <laughs> um, I I think I, you know, was overwhelmed, but for me it, it made connections that I, you know, I kind of felt in my soul for a while, so it was comforting at the same time. Right. Okay. I could see you and I could see Jessica's ear. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what anybody else could see. <laughs> it's like, but it's nice. Hello, darling. It's nice. Hello. You, you, look, you both look so, uh, like so healthy, all joggy, so sort of all ready to go on your hike and everything. We are ready. Yes, we are ready. I am all sort of dogged up and uh, <laughs> dressed up. <laughs> you know, looking like I'm about to go out to dinner, uh, which I'm not actually about to cook dinner and and even as we speak i have in my in my wonderful crock pot my wonderful all clad crock pot which i love uh i've got some lamb, lamb shanks cooking so we're gonna have a sort of a, a bit of a greek night tonight i've got some friends coming over we're gonna have lamb shanks uh the, the apropos of absolutely nothing at all uh so um can people see you on uh when you pop in like that they yes they should be able to, to see us yes Good. well that's nice because it's always nice to know who you're talking to all right um i want to remind everybody again because i did start with this this morning about the competition you've got one more week to get your entries in on the 22nd of march uh entries need to be in and it's the three chairs the sad chair the happy chair and the inspirational chair 
the same story in each one please and um if you miss the first part uh, of the show and i talk about it in more detail just when we're done you can go back and rewind it and then you can hear it again uh but um it's a really good exercise to do and i would suggest even if you're not joining in the competition you try it out for yourself because it gives you a a whole new way of looking at things and a wider view of looking at things i do want to talk before we take another question i want to talk about mantras a little bit and um uh i'm i recommend a mantra for not every one of my clients but for those clients who for instance we gave we sent healing to lauren this morning and we sent healing to someone from anxiety i think it was gene for anxiety if you're suffering with anxiety or if you you know you're having a tough time for whatever reason or if you feel life isn't going your way or you can't get a job whatever it is a mantra is what you need and a mantra let's just be clear from the start a mantra what is it what is a mantra a mantra is a sequence of words of power a sequence of words in other words a sentence or a, a a line of words a sequence of words of power so you know what how can we make a powerful sentence well i use i tell my students to use use power words in those in that sequence of words to use power words pa a power word can be i always is a power word i can will shall if you want to go to the negative can't won't uh no <laughs> they're also power words in the negative um so we when a mantra i should say is a sequence of positive powerful words for instance if you're feeling depressed um i will i and is a power word will i will lift my face to the sun and i will i will again two power words find joy and you say those if that is your mantra and everybody has different mantras depending on the different circumstances that they have i will lift my face to the sun and i will find joy and happiness you say that 10 times over so you repeat i will find i will lift my face to the sun and i will find happiness and joy i will lift my face and on and on it goes 10 times repeated those those lines a sequence of words repeated 10 times three times a day in the morning when you get up lunchtime when you're flagging a bit and certainly before you go to bed at night and you know if you say those words often enough even if you don't feel them initially if you say those words often enough you will drive yourself you will give yourself power a mantra doesn't actually give you the power it reminds you of the power that you have inside of you and it reminds you of of the goals that you uh, that you need to achieve or that you want to achieve i will be a powerful person and i will find joy in my life emphasis on the power words power words again there are a lot of them i'm just giving you one or two i is a power word i is a very powerful word i i am is a very powerful combination of two words i am i am i am power words you can use them and they will create power within you they will help you to just access the power that is within you i am shall can will those are those action words are power words that you can use for your mantra and i would suggest for all of you who are feeling you know a bit lost or a bit fed up or a bit lonely or a bit you know sort of uh, not really knowing where to go next in your life or what to do take your mantra you have to use it though three times a day repeated 10 times three times a day um every day now when i was going through my 
uh, divorce and no money the divorce actually didn't bother me too much have to tell you because I was ready for it at that time but I had no money I couldn't feed my child I would go to work plaster a smile on my face and keep it there until I came home in the afternoon and sometimes my face was so frozen with smiling I would sit on the bottom of the stairs and sometimes the tears would drip down and I would be still smiling because I couldn't take this frozen look off of my face. That's what we have to do when we're struggling. We just have to put a good face on it because you can't go to work moaning and complaining and, you know, you can't, you, you know, you have to pay attention to, you know, not putting your misery onto other people. But there were, there, you know, I used to, have a mantra and i would say it all the time i would drive to the healing centers and i would be saying my mantra and i would be crying or i'd be that the words would stick in my throat because i didn't want to find joy and happiness i just wanted to be miserable i just wanted to be sort of set in my own misery sometimes because that's human to do that but I would force myself to say those words, even when they were hard to say. And as time went on, I found them easier to say. I found my mantra easier to say. You know, if it's easy, it's easy. You know, if it's hard, it's hard. You've got to do, sometimes you've got to do what's hard and then easy comes. But, you know, I recommend anyone to do that and eventually my mantra did work and eventually i found myself one day smiling i was in the car actually and all of a sudden i realized that i was actually smiling and it it, it had taken me it was real it take me no effort whatsoever so say your mantra I'd, I'd advise anyone to say a mantra a mantra what is it a mantra is a sequence of words of power why is it it helps us it drives us forward why should we use it why not it's a tool that we keep in our tool bag as there are many many tools for us to use there's one of the tools i give to my students to use one of the tools i'm giving to you al do you want to comment on that at all no have i lost, no, no, have I lost yeah, you, do you have can you hear me yeah yeah, so um, that was, uh, you know, one of the lessons that, you know, we talk about all these wonderful lessons that uh, for people that, you know, will eventually subscribe, um, you know, that was one of the lessons that uh, helped me enormously um, to just reflect and kind of see what it was that I needed as my mantra um, was, was a really great process, just like that reflective piece. Yeah. Um, and then actually creating it and, um, you know, for me, I, you know, at the beginning, I said it every day, but, you know, as you were saying it, I, 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 I haven't said it in a while, but it was in my head and I, and I remembered, you know, exactly, you know, what it was. And I was actually yeah, jotting it down. Stop doing it again now, aren't you? <laughs> exactly. And uh, I even, I even, where I had, uh, I had in my bathroom, I had a mirror and I took those uh, kind of window markers and I, I actually wrote it on uh, my bathroom mirror. And so that I would see it every day too. So little little things like that um, uh, do help enormously, and uh, I can't I can't uh, express the value enough that that it that it uh, you know it helped me in a, at a point in my life that I really needed something like that, and uh, it's still you know as like I said as you talk about it, it's still in my head. And, uh, it's a very like it's a it's a very very powerful powerful tool that we can use. Let's have another question, shall we? Just yes, you have one, or you want me to ask? Not one? specific to mantra, but you keep okay. uh, you keep flitting back and forth, and it would be good if you didn't flit anymore. I think just just let you know. That's okay. Yeah. It, oh, um, you so, so so Paul Paul <laughs> asked <laughs> Paul asked with the, get, get off the get, get off the camera. <laughs> sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there again. Of course, anyone who right, so, finds this interesting in. in uh, sorry, not interesting. I'm sorry to anyone who finds this irritating. We have had a few people write in and say, do you have to keep flicking back and forth? And I keep oh. saying to people, this is a new process for us, uh, <laughs> doing it like this. So please, you know, uh, yeah, be, be nice to us. Um, <laughs> uh, Rosemary, if you just, if you click on your face on the on the computer, um, it should, it should oh, go straight to you. So it's my fault now then. Nope, it's not your fault. It's never your fault. 
Uh, what's am I doing? So if you just click on your face on the screen, it should, you know, it should keep you static. All right, then. So it's my fault. It is my fault. I'm not good at this. You know this, Al. All right, let's have our next question, shall we? So so Paul asks, this is a question, an email question. Good morning, uh, with, Paul. With the recent passing of uh, Stephen Hawking, he was inspired to ask a question in relation to energy. And he says that you mention energy a lot in your books and lectures and particularly different types of energy. So he asked, what exactly is the energy referred to? And does it differ um, uh, from energy as we know it? And I'm not sure what the as we know it piece is, but you know, I guess explain what you mean when you talk about energy. I'm doing my best. So it's a bit of a long uh, subject, actually. So I'll just you know do this to quickly, and then um, you know it'll be certainly one of those things we talk about when we do the classes. Um, but yes, there are different types of energy. There's negative energy, there's positive energy. Uh, you know, when you look at, I mean, Stephen Hawking was an amazing uh, guy. I don't know if anybody saw the movie. Um, and, uh, you know, people forget he was a bit of a womanizer as well, I have to say, uh, in, his, in his younger days. Um, and uh, according, only according to the book, I've read the book as well, uh, that his first wife, uh, wrote which is it's an amazing story it's an amazing very human story and we tend to you know sort of think of people like Stephen Hawking as, as a you know sort of beyond human perhaps or you know because because you know he had this incredible brain you know talk about Einstein had an incredible brain and so on um, so there's the energy in you know the the electricity that we have there's different voltages and you know this we have you know when we talk about i just had a uh, not just a couple of years ago i had a new oven put in and they put it in and they didn't get the voltage right consequently uh, everything blew out so there's different levels of energy and there are different types of energy there's there's energy that is much more positive there's energy that is you know much more defined so yes there are, are variety of different types of energy that can do different things for instance you know we only need low voltage to put the light on but so we only need perhaps a low voltage to to be able to sense and to be aware of the things that are out there but in order to sort of go further and to go deeper or to reach out further into the universe we have to have a perhaps a build-up of energy or more of a voltage of energy if you like more more powerful energy and we can create this energy. There are things we can do, lessons we can learn, ways that we can actually create energy so that, you know, we can make it more powerful and more positive. Um, it's, it's a very uh, intricate issue. It's a long issue. We are going to be talking about energy and the kind of energy that I use uh, and that people can use to connect with the spirit world. And we certainly, in one of our lessons, we're going to be certainly exploring that and teaching people how they can build their own energy and how they can become I, I like to say more in tune raising your level of consciousness takes energy takes a certain type of energy you don't have to uh you know sort of have a, a big bang or a big force of energy to do this sometimes it takes a very gentle and very calming energy and doing this in a very gentle easy way but yes you know energy is energy's energy and it's a uh, it's it's all the same different levels different ways of using it let's put it that way do we have another question i hope paul that sort of satisfied you. I know it's not satisfied you enough, but that's as much as you get for today. Show you another question. Yes, and you did actually touch on this one when you talked about personalities, but Linda would like to know what type of growth happens in the afterlife? Good morning, Linda. That's a great question. The, the type of growth, well, again, it depends on the person. It depends on uh, how open you are. It depends how um stubborn you are or if you're stuck in a, a belief of one sort or another of course just just finding yourself there uh should open your eyes you would think and should make you more amenable to the fact that you know things are not perhaps what we always thought they were and that there's more to life and death than we supposed 
but again it depends on the person but the kind of growth is to do with the soul and it's to do with you know how much more we can learn about our own selves how we can how our soul can grow to become for instance on this earth we we have so many opportunities brought before us to be um not just sympathetic but to be empathetic you can only be empathetic really if you have experienced the same or very similar to someone else you know you can empathize with them because you've been through the same thing but you can also sympathize you don't have to have gone through the same thing but you can have sympathy for people even if you haven't perhaps shared their experiences or or, or, or sort of walked in their shoes so to speak and the same applies when we you know when we leave this earth there are we have so many different opportunities and so many different places we can go and so many places that we can visit um, we also do remember we do have the choice to come back here and do this all again if we feel that we haven't grown enough but uh, for instance and um, just to sort of try bring it to sort of a more human level so that you might be able to understand a little bit more um, so many people come to me from the spirit world to talk to their families and they may not have been all that they should have been when they were here on this earth but they've learned uh they've grown uh you know i shouldn't have been so unhappy or i should have been more attentive as a parent or uh whatever the regrets are they can see and they can become aware of their faults when you know as they were human as we all do have those faults and trying to rectify them is you know attaining some kind of growth growth process um just on a weirdly personal note never mind i won't even go there let's ask another question <laughs> let's have another question can we have another question are you there anybody there is there anybody there al have i lost you i think i've lost them yeah. yes can okay. you hear me, you, you're all tinny but i can hear you all right, Sarah asks, um, or actually comments, her, her daughter, daughter saw a, a girl in her room, and the next night, her, um, Sarah's grandfather came to her and told uh, her that it was his girlfriend. Um, could it have been my grandmother, not her daughter, I think she's asking? Okay. Yeah. I'm a bit confused by the question actually so, so the daughter saw someone in her room correct the next the night, the the next next night, night her grandfather, came. grandfather came to sarah or to the daughter to to sarah and sarah maybe you can clarify a little bit too and told me um it was his girlfriend could it have been his grandmother um yeah, was, he, was he referring to his yeah her grandmother as his girlfriend yeah, yeah I think I, well sometimes just you know you have to be clear when we hear people in the spirit world and again um you know this is why i talk about the responsibility of what we do when we are talking to people in the spirit world and we're passing on messages which sarah i'm not suggesting for a minute that you're doing but it's so easy to miss here to misconstrue a word a little bit like i'm struggling now hearing al maybe you are all here, struggling a little bit to hear him uh, we did have a, we had a clear, you know, clear voice and then we, now it's not so clear. And it's the same way in the spirit world. And sometimes we hear one word and we make an assumption that it's one word. It's more likely that it's, a, that he's talking about his grandmother rather than his girlfriend. And uh, it's very easy to, to, to get muddled up. So, you know, I wasn't there, so I can't comment entirely. But remember, when we're hearing those in the spirit world, you know, just, if you hear it once, you, you apply the three-time rule. If you hear it once, okay, you've heard it. If you hear it twice, pay attention. If you hear it a third time, go with it and move forward. But always be skeptical of yourself and what you're hearing because that way you will find the truth. You know, sometimes when I'm talking to someone in the spirit world, they'll say something to me and I'm not really clear about it. So I'll ask them to repeat it and they'll, they'll repeat it again and then again. And if I hear the same thing three times, I'm much more ready to go with it. But it's not always clear. So, you know, don't, uh, you know, 
just remember that when you're when you're connecting with him sarah when you're connecting with those in the spirit world i think it's greatly connecting by the way i think it's lovely all right next question so uh, rosemary as a follow-up to that you know a lot of people will comment that they have dreams of, of loved ones and whatnot and I, I know you mentioned the three time rule uh you know how, how do people differentiate when they are dreaming about loved ones you know what's what's actually a message from them versus what it, you know may be what just a dream yeah uh the simplest thing i can tell you is that <clears throat> excuse me when it is a definite message you your soul knows you just know your soul knows you wake up you remember what's been said or you remember you know clearly whoever it was who was trying to connect with you and um you you might say you know you're thinking about it you wake up and you're thinking about it and you and it's so clear it's just so clear and then you'll say to yourself but it was but it was only a dream uh, but then there's this little niggle in your head which says but it was so real yes but it was only a dream and this little niggle applies again and this little niggle is the soul of your the, the voice of your soul the heartbeat of your soul which is saying to you no pay attention pay attention so when you get that little niggle there you say it was only well, it was only a dream you try and brush it off and there's that little niggle that says no this is real then you absolutely know that it's real unfortunately you know i always advise people to be skeptical because only by being skeptical are you going to come to the truth in the first place I am the most skeptical person in the world. If somebody tells me they've heard from, you know, someone in the spirit world or seen something or another, my instinct, my natural instinct is to think, oh, wait a minute, did they really? Especially when I hear or see, did I really? I am very skeptical about other people. I'm very skeptical about myself. So this is why I'm saying apply the three time rule. Skepticism healthy skepticism is a very very good thing being critical for the sake of it or denying just for the sake of it or because you don't want to believe you know and you're going to shrug it off that's, that's ridiculous but being healthily skeptical in other words being skeptical but being open-minded and being you know being aware yet you know this could be proof to you that it's real but is it or isn't it you know that's when you know that's what i advise people to do and that's when you will come to the truth and those in the spirit world will show you absolutely they will show you that it's real i think do we have a time for another couple of questions i think we do Let's we're, 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 cl we're close on time um there's another email question okay. uh, lauren, lauren asks i did the lauren question i think um i that's don't in the beginning um I think it was, I can't remember you, what it is now. Did I miss it about shamans? Yeah, yeah I did it. Sorry. Okay, good. That that's one. okay. All right, so did you ask, uh, answer the one from Jean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm not that good, I guess. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, did you get the question from Jean about anxiety? Yeah, tips on anxiety. I, I did actually i do have you know some tips on anxiety i could talk about meditation i you know there are so many meditation tapes everywhere just go online and you'll find any and, and every one i have four uh, meditation tapes but i also have a healing tape as well uh, i know mine are good and i know mine work uh, if you want to know more about them or you want to find out where you can get them from you can get them from me so email rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com but to you know you can go you can you know just go online or go into a bookstore or whatever and you can you can find them. I, I can't vouch for how good they're going to be um but meditation you know sessions of meditation in that way music good music uh, you know find find music that really calms you and stills you and sit yourself in a chair for an hour with your headphones on and don't you know don't make yourself available to anyone uh, learn a piece of music if you're feeling if you're out shopping for instance or if you are out with family or whatever and you start to feel anxious find that piece of music in your head and start humming to yourself or singing to yourself music is very very calming even if you're not musically inclined music is very calming a very helpful way to stop anxiety and there are lots of other tips as well uh, you know maybe I'll, I'll mention more of those 
<clears throat> in the coming weeks. Um, let's have another question. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so we have another question from uh, Lisa, actually. Uh, she says when she dreams about her son who passed at 19, uh, she dreams that he's a child. Uh, does the spirit choose a certain age when they are the, the happiest to appear? No, and um, I think it's I think it's uh, probably your input into your dream that is you know you, because to, to you is always your little boy. So it, you know it doesn't. I mean, my daughter's forty something years old, and she's always going to be my little girl. And you know there are times when I view her. Uh, not as the woman that she is, but as the little girl that she is to me. So I think that, you know, that's that's what that combination is there, uh, Lisa. So, you know, don't don't worry about it. He's there anyway. And um, I, I actually, as I'm talking to you, I do see him standing in front of me. Well, I did see it. Let's put it this way. I see a young man standing in front of me who is telling me that he is grown and he is learning and exploring so you know so he has not reverted back to being a child this is just the way you feel about him and the way you see him uh, just the same as i see my daughter he's waving furiously at me as i'm taught so i'm waving back and blowing you kisses from him darling so i hope that helps you uh do we have another question now quick question yes uh sharon asks um or, or states her, her husband her husband came to her um and her son in the, in a dream on the same night. Uh, she says uh, their experiences in the dream were similar. Uh, her question is, can a loved one come to two people in their dreams at the same time? Same time. Yes, I knew that was where you were going with that. Um, yes, because uh, time in the spirit world is a completely different essence than time as we know it here. And it is possible very very possible and it often happens that it feels like it's the same time and they might be just like a little nanosecond of difference but i think it's your husband wanting to let you both know how clearly he sees you and how very much he's still with you and loves you very very much uh so you know don't how can it be in two places at once it's easy uh, you know i always uh, sort of remember the the Star Trek movie, you know, when it's the beam me up, Scotty thing, you know, they do that beam me up, and beam him up, and beam him back. And you don't even know he's come and gone. And it's sort of, sort of like, is it not, you know, they don't have to go into a machine, but it's kind of like that. It's speed of light. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's how we travel when we're in the spirit world. We travel the speed of light, and time is of a completely different essence. Fascinating, isn't it? Just fascinating. All right. So, Again, the competition, if you want to join, just your entries must be in by next week. March the 22nd is the deadline. And after that, we're not taking any more. You have to subscribe in order to be, you know, part of this and uh, to join. Uh, I'd urge you to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe anyway, because there are lots of other good things coming on YouTube and you'll need to be a subscriber uh, to, you know, to get the emails and to get all the information about what's happening. We are going to be doing our lessons. And, um, you know, I know that some people think, oh, gosh, you know, subscribing $25 a, a month is, is a lot, but it's actually less than a cup of coffee a week, just to point out to you. And it depends on how much you want to learn and grow. And we're going to be giving you an awful lot. We're going to be having at least a lesson lasting an hour at least, if not longer, uh, once a week. We're going to be having a Facebook connection so all the students can you know chat with each other we're going to have uh, mentors Ali is going to be a mentor we're going to have mentors on Facebook so that if you have qu more questions your mentors having been all of them been my students will be able to help you with that and help you with the you know the lessons and the exercises that we're going to be giving so and you'll also have access to full day workshops and that sort of thing um, do you want to say any more quickly about that, Al, before we... Uh, yes, just remember, it, it is, uh, everyone, it is an exclusive uh, Facebook group. So it's it's a group that only members will be a part of. So it's a very personalized um, experience in there. Uh, and uh, if you are interested, you can email, but we're also going to send out a form uh, that will collect uh, information from on interest um, uh, about the uh, course. So... 
so then thank you so then just to be clear to send a form to you we do need your email address so if you're interested send us your email address and just put on the top you know classes so that you know that that's the subject so we know that what you that's what you're interested in and we will send you you know it's going to happen fairly soon now we're going to be sending you the forms and so on uh, for that i am almost at the point of publishing a new book that's the first you've heard of it yes well what can I say? I've been saving it as a surprise. Uh, and we'll let you know when that's coming out and when you, that will be available to you. Um, so if you need anything from me, if you just want to write and just want healing or if you, whatever it is that you want, uh, email us rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. I try very hard to do the best I can, you know, do to answer everybody. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, on FaceTime, you can, on Facebook, sorry, on um, Instagram and on all of those other things. And of course, you can find us on YouTube. And you can, in fact, uh, when once we click off this, you can actually go back and watch it all over again as many times as you like all right so in the meantime thank you for joining me thank you thank you thank you for all of your questions we really appreciate it we'll be sending healing to the, all those who need it and until i see you again i've got to find that little arrow there it is until we meet again please 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 have a very very oh thank you to alan thank you to jessica sorry almost forgot to do that thank you to gray eagle until i see you next time Please, please have a very, 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 very blessed day. And I don't think I've clicked on it. There we are. Let's try that. No, still clicking. There you go. <laughs> no, still clicking. Oops.